Hello, beautiful internet family. My name is Dan Davis, and I'm the creative director at danstube.tv, as well as the Fearless Drone Academy, which is the ultimate online drone course for beginners. And today's episode, I've got a really, really special one that's important to all the beginner drone pilots out there. And in today's video, I've got the most important flight checks for beginner drone pilots. Now in the Fearless Drone Academy, I do go even further and there's some advanced tips uh, in there. So if you are interested, you can sign up using the code DANSTUBE to save 10% off the ultimate online drone course. But in today's video, I'm gonna show you the most important things that you need to know as a beginner drone pilot. Uh, and these are simple checks that you can do every single flight. You might have a different drone, but all of these tips will work the same regardless of which drone you have. So the first thing you wanna do is as you unfold the drone, depending again on which drone you have, you'll see that you've got these little motors here. Now they're normally gonna be metal like this, um, but if you've got one of the mini drones, it's got more of a kind of plasticky feel uh, to it. And also they spin slightly differently, but all the drones that you're gonna be using, if they are a DJI drone, um, or if they're a relatively high-end drone, they're gonna be using brushless motors, which this guy here, the Air 2S, is using brushless motors. Now what that means is as you spin the actual motor itself, you'll see that there's no resistance there. You won't hear any grinding, you won't hear anything. It's just so smooth because it's brushless. There's no contact at all. So that's how the motor needs to feel. Now, a lot of drone pilots don't do this check because they don't know about it. You know, if they actually went through a course or some sort of certificate, then they would know these kind of things. But a lot of people buy a drone and they don't have any of this knowledge, but that brushless motor should have no contact at all. It should just glide. Now, the reason this check is really important is because what could have happened here is you might've actually had some like grit, dirt, it could be anything, debris from anything that you accidentally knocked into, or maybe, you know, there's some sand or dirt that's thrown up in the air and then it's got caught up in the actual motors here. Now, if you're hearing any form of grinding or like resistance as you're spinning those motors, you could have something caught up in here. So this is the first check you wanna do before every flight. You know, in transportation, when you're actually moving your drone to a location, anything could fall in here. You know, what happens if some sugar got in here because you had a sugary snack and you've got some sugar in the motors and then that's like actually grinding and caught up in the actual motor itself. That's something you don't want at all. What I would recommend people out there doing is buying themselves just a little compressed air canister with the little like straw on the end. So what you can actually do is find the little gaps in the motors and blow out any debris inside of the motor itself because that could cause damage, it could cause an accident or it could cause a crash depending on what's obviously caught up in here and how long it's been in there for. But that's just something you need to do. And you can do that before every single flight, you know, as you land and swap batteries, you've been flying for a little bit. So it's always good to stop, uh, you know, land the drone, stop the motors, turn it off, and then just spin them loosely. Just see that there's no contact there. Um, and also another thing, as you land your drone, you just want to feel the temperature of the motors themselves. They should not be like too hot to the touch. You should be able to actually touch them. And if you're feeling that maybe one motor is like burning hot, maybe that motor is actually overworking. Um, so there could be a malfunction there. At that point, you want to take it to a drone repair store. Um, but it's just good to keep an eye on those kind of things. Cause again, another thing that a lot of drone pilots just don't do. I've also got some additional tips as well that are really helpful and something that I again, go into deeper on the Fearless Drone Academy. But again, something I see a lot of people not doing. So your drone's there, you launch into the sky, and then so many people just fly away immediately. They just go for it. Now, what you really want to do here is you want to actually monitor the behavior of your drone. Listen out for sounds that might be abnormal. Look for how it's actually handling in the wind condition, just to make sure that it's typical. You know, like there, yeah, there will be a little bit of drift and movement with the wind, but it should be holding that position uh, that it's hovering in. It should not be straying too far away. So that's a really good example. You just wanna see it in that position, countering the wind. You wanna listen out for any sounds that are abnormal. And then you also wanna test the responsiveness of the controller. So you wanna literally do all the maneuvers while it's nice and low in a safe area, just to check that the responsiveness of the controller is there uh, before you actually fly the drone away. So after you've monitored the drone's behavior for about a minute, maybe two minutes, depending on how windy it is and if there's anything you're noticing, 
And that's when you can then fly and get some shots, get some photos, videos, whatever you wanna do. But I think the most important thing again, which a lot of people don't do, is they just fly their drone cold and then just run out the battery until they come back. Now, what I'm proposing here is that you fly your drone, you know, you can go up high, get some video and photo, just kind of scout out the area, but then bring your drone back, land your drone, and then do all those checks again. Check the motor temperature, check that they're gliding smoothly, um, and then obviously launch it again and make sure that it's still behaving the way that you would expect the drone to behave, make sure all the responsiveness is there. And then that's where I propose going a little bit further away, where I see a lot of people set their drone up, launch it cold and then just fly away like 500 meters away they haven't even checked anything you know anything could have happened from their previous flight to this point so that's just another really important thing to make sure that you repeat that process uh, with every battery and every time you land as well but anyway that's the end of this video i hope you found those tips uh, really helpful and if you do want to dive into them a little bit further you can go over to the fearless drone academy use the code dan's tube to save 10 percent and i've got some even more in-depth tips over there to help you become a fearless drone pilot. So I'll chat to you in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching and talk to you then. Peace. It's too late now to turn around and back again. I made my bed 